This is Bahrain, and I'm here to take Lamborghini up on the offer to drive the replacement to the entry-level Huracan Coupe. This is the Lamborghini Huracan Evo. What might seem like a mid-cycle facelift at first glance belies so, so much more. The Evo takes Lamborghini's entry-level mid-engine supercar and adds, innovates, revises, begs, steals, and borrows everything it needs to make this not just an update, but a complete overhaul. So, what's new? The biggest change in this car is the engine. It has lifted the same 5.2 liter naturally aspirated V10 from the Performante and slotted it right in here, which means you get just about the same 631 horsepower and 629 pounds feet of torque as the car that famously beat the Nürburgring record. That's a lot of grunt to slam into the base Huracan and on paper it will make this pretty damn close in performance to its track focused sibling. But the question then is, what is the difference between the Evo and the Performante? Well, this is still fundamentally a road car. Where the Performante has adaptive aero, this has fixed aero. The main difference then is on that big wing that you get on the back of the Performante, which had the ALA system, which would allow it to stall in high-speed straights, giving you less drag, but be activated in the corners to give you downforce on the side where you needed it most. The Evo gives you a different set of characteristics. New vents prevent turbulence down the side of the car, and the fixed rear wing, which incidentally is the most curved design touch I've seen on a Lambo in a very long time, can both develop a tremendous amount of downforce, but also create a Venturi effect to speed up air passing through it, reducing drag. In total, the Evo generates seven times as much downforce as the car it replaces, with only minimal sacrifice on the straights. But it's not just the Performante that's had its homework copied. Oh no, the Aventador has had a few things pilfered from it as well. Namely, all-wheel steer, which made that car so much more agile, now finds a home in the Huracan Evo, as well as its chassis technology. That totals up to being the best selection of all the best features available in Lamborghinis today. But the innovations don't end there. An all-new brain, the LDVI system, combines the traction control systems, the torque vectoring, the magnetorheological suspension, all-wheel drive and all-wheel steer to continuously monitor and adapt to your driving to give you the best possible experience in any given moment. Whether you're tearing up the track or stuck in Bahraini traffic, the Huracan Evo tweaks and adapts based on your inputs to give you an end result it thinks you need before you think you need it. With that, thanks to the new suspension and chassis tech, there's a much wider range between its most stiff and grippy setup in sports and Corsa modes and the more comfortable road-focused Strada mode. So you could make the Huracan Evo into a daily driver and it's probably, perhaps with the exception of the Urus, the car you can daily drive the most out of Lamborghini stable, but I'll be perfectly honest, I've only been in here a couple of hours and my back is already beginning to kill me. Also, there isn't the biggest amount of headroom. I'm not really tall. I'm only six foot tall and I have next to zero headroom left. I feel like I can't get the seat quite as low as I need it to be. I still feel quite high up for a car that's meant to be a mid-engine supercar. I'd rather have my butt kissing the tarmac, but you can forgive this car everything for that engine note. Drop a few cogs. V10 that is just, it just works. And in an age of turbocharged everything, it's so good to still have something that's unadulterated. Another addition on the Huracan Evo is this new touchscreen in the middle of the transmission tunnel here. It's in a slightly weird position. I'm finding it a bit distracting to look down. I'm having to take my eyes quite far away from the road to see what's going on there. When asked whether or not they could have put a heads-up display in to show you a couple of the features that you might need to see, they said that because of the raked windscreen and the packaging of the car in general, they'd never be able to fit one in. That said, you can just use two fingers and it'll automatically let you do the volume, which is even easier than finding a knob, I must say. So really compared to the outgoing Huracan, it's got a new steering system, it's got a new adaptive suspension system, it's got a new brain, it has better aero, it's a completely different car almost. Where this car really pulls all of its elements together to give you the full package is out on track, pushing it at its best. So guess where I'm going?
Every effort has been made to make the Huracan Evo more comfortable out on the roads, but really where the improvements are in their element is out here on track. We only had a brief few stints on the Bahrain International Circuit to put those changes to the test, but they were pretty evident as soon as I pulled out of the pit lane. Now the Lamborghini dynamic steering was previously in the Huracan was one of its weaker points as an option. But here, just because the car can turn in so sharply and rotate around itself so easily, the slight numbness doesn't matter. The incredibly clever suspension in this car keeps it flat, not only through the corners, but under braking and acceleration, it doesn't pitch or roll at all. You get maximum grip and contact with the road at all times. So you can get back on the power and just squeeze it along. With the extra downforce in this thing, over seven times as much as the old Huracan, you're still as planted. You don't have the dynamic shift of that downforce like you do in the Performante where it can shift the downforce from left to right. But the torque vectoring system in this takes over and gives you pretty much the same experience. See this corner here, which is a long, long corner to hold. It knew somehow what speed and gear I wanted to be in. I figured it out. <laughs> The all-wheel steer, all-wheel drive, traction control, dynamic system, it all works together. There is no restrictions on what you can do. But all those systems working in the background aren't just there to make it feel completely planted and safe, but also to make it feel exciting. It's doing a lot of work to keep me on the straight and narrow. And this is the entry-level Huracan, the entry-level Lamborghini. With a 0-62 to 62 time of just 2.9 seconds and a top speed of over 200 miles an hour, the straights are an absolute joy. The speed just builds and builds and the carbon ceramics allow you to be just as aggressive on the stop pedal as you are on the throttle. The brakes themselves work incredibly well, but you do have to get over the slightly softer feel of the pedal. Unlike the Performante, this has been dialed in softer and more compliant, which can be a bit of a shock the first time you barrel into a corner at 150 miles an hour. But once you get the feel for this essentially road driving brake feel, you can stamp on it to your heart's content. So yeah, performante performance without a few minor details and without a big fixed wing on the rear. And this is the entry level Lamborghini, entry level. It gives you so much help, but it wraps it in this veneer of excitement where it still feels loose and exciting. It doesn't feel like it's holding your hand even though it kind of is. It's a, um, it's a real experience. I think the only thing that could potentially add to this track driving experience if maybe we could go out again when the sun goes down. Maybe if I ask really nicely. for a new supercar there's loads of companies with a lot of really great options right now depending on what you're interested in there's a lot to choose from want something with racing pedigree well Ferrari will gladly take your money or maybe you're more of a McLaren person and you like their uncompromised tub that gives you just as fast coupes and convertibles but if you're like me you might be interested in something that awakes that inner child within you that four-year-old who first fell in love with supercars and pinned the poster up on their bedroom wall and if that's the case, well, Lamborghini is still the shop to go to. And really now their entry level car has taken on the engine from a Nürburgring beater. Well, your job in selecting a supercar has just got that much harder.